Hey everyone, Catherine here with Nest Hollow and I wanted to start off with a quick little story here. A few years ago while outside I noticed this little male house finch perched on a branch outside in one of my bushes. And it was the oddest thing because you know how sometimes you test things with animals to see if you can get a little closer to them without them stirring? Well this little guy wasn't budging. And if you've ever been in a situation then the closer you get the more you start to wonder if there's something wrong or if they're injured or something like that. So of course now I'm wondering, which prompts me to get even closer because I want to examine him. And nothing was obvious at the moment, but then he turned his head and I saw the problem. His little eye had this infection. It was watery and half shut. During that time, I was really new to birding too, and I knew this was bad, but I didn't know what to do. One thing I did know is that I couldn't just catch him and try to mend him because, well, I don't know anything about the situation, and secondly, it's not legal to take a native North American bird into captivity. It also didn't occur to me back then to just call a rehabber for help, which is something you should definitely do if you ever run into an injured animal or a sick animal or anything like that. But I did look up house finch with eye infection and learned that this little house finch had conjunctivitis, which is also called house finch eye disease. And I also learned way back then that this is really common in house finches. So in this video, I'm going to give you as much details as I can about the situation, including what causes it, if it's fatal, if it's transmitted to other birds, if it can infect people, and what you should do if you observe a house finch with conjunctivitis. By the way, if you find that this information is helpful, consider tucking it away or saving it to a special playlist in case you run into someone else who asks about it or is encountering this. I'm hoping that this will become a good resource for everyone. So the first place we should start with all of this is the basics. What causes the disease and can house finches recover from it? House finch conjunctivitis or house finch eye disease is caused by a bacterium called Mycoplasma galliceptacum. Mycoplasma is a genus of bacteria and galliceptacum would be the species. And just for something a little more familiar, a lion's formal scientific name is Panthera leo, and the scientific name of a tiger is Panthera tigris. Both the lion and the tiger belong to the same genus, Panthera, but the two are different species, so leo and tigris. This is the same for mycoplasma, and within this genus, there's at least a hundred or more species. Aside from Galliceptacum, there are other species of mycoplasma that can also infect wild birds, but this particular species is the one most known for causing the conjunctivitis. It actually originated in poultry, but then in 1994, a strain was discovered in house finches, and since then, house finches have become one of the most common songbirds to transmit this bacterium. Mycoplasma infections between house finches can be transmitted transmitted in open air as well as at feeders. And in some studies I read, one of the reasons researchers hypothesize house finches being a bigger carrier of this bacterium has to do with their flocking and colony behavior. These guys are really social birds and you'll often see them hanging out in large groups or hanging out the, at the feeders. Bird feeders are one place the bacterium can really spread and be transmitted to others. As house finches reach into the ports, they breathe on it, they rub their beaks on it, and their eyes get close to those ports, and all that allows for some easy bacterial transfer. In addition to bird feeders and the social behaviors of house finches, the infection can also spread to their nestlings. For most house finches, the bacterium primarily grows or localizes in the respiratory systems as well as in the eye, causing that conjunctivitis. And the conjunctivitis symptoms we observe could be minimal where eyes are just watering to really bad where the eyes are swollen shut, or even in some cases it can cause blindness. There are studies that show too that cases of infection seem to increase during the fall and winter time, but that's not isolated to those seasons. I started seeing people post about observations back in July and it started really climbing in August. But cases can happen in the spring and summer just as easily too. In terms of how fatal this is, I dug into this and found that a lot of the research done on house finch eye disease has been on wild caught birds that were monitored in captivity or the research was done in experimentally infected birds. And in captivity, there's a decent amount of, of recovery. However, another study examined the disease in wild study birds, and in the wild, the infection leaves birds susceptible to predation. It also makes it really hard for them to find food or have access to food. In addition to that, songbirds infected with mycoplasma can sometimes be infected with other bacteria, and that dual infection situation, that can lead to higher fatalities. The good news in all of this is that even though it can be fatal, the fatalities that do happen are usually a result of something else. So fatalities are usually more indirect and many birds can still survive. While house finches are really famous for this eye disease, other birds can get a mycoplasma infection. And other finches in particular will show those symptoms of conjunctivitis. So will cardinals. Several researchers have investigated different types of birds that get infected and what reports show is that mycoplasma has a really wide host range. This table, for instance, was dated 
data pulled from an older house finch disease survey from Cornell, and it lists incident rates of conjunctivitis across several species. In doing a lot of research on mycoplasma infections within songbirds, something that I learned is that some birds may appear more asymptomatic, but still have some other kind of physiological consequence. For instance, on this table, there's only one case of an eastern bluebird having conjunctivitis from a mycoplasma infection. I actually talk a little more about the mycoplasma infection and bluebirds in another video, and I'll link that in the description. But when looking at other studies that examine the infection within eastern bluebirds, I found that the bacterium usually grows more in the palate of a bluebird rather than the eyes. Obviously, that's not the law here, but what other studies show us is that a sick songbird or a carrier may not be all that obvious to us. So what do you do if you observe a house finch or another bird that's showing symptoms of this infection or really any other kind of sickness? First, take your feeders down immediately. Throw out all of your seed and then clean and sterilize your bird feeders. Then leave your feeders down for at least seven to 10 days. If you have a bird bath, scrub it out, then rinse and dry it thoroughly. I might also wait a week at least to refill it just to be safe. Having a week or longer lapse before setting out your feeders again can hopefully let the infection sort of run out of the local bird population. If you wanna get really involved, you might also wanna let your neighbors know about the situation too, and maybe they can take down their feeders. Next, if there is a bird in particular that you're worried about, always consider calling a rehabber. A rehabber can tell you how to catch a sick bird and how to transport it to their facilities, or they can even tell you whether they can help in the first place. But do not handle a sick bird without the advice or instruction of a licensed rehabber. Hygiene is also really important in all of this. While this species, Mycoplasma galliceptacum, is not known to cause sickness in people, it's still highly recommended that you wash your hands afterwards, partly because along with this species of bacterium, there's always the risk of many other species being present that could cause a human sickness. Then in terms of prevention, make sure to space out your feeders, keep the seed fresh. If there has been a big rain, dump out your old seed and refill with new seed. Damp seed can become a really good bacterial breeding ground. It's also really a good idea to regularly clean and wash your feeders. Ultimately, what this all means is that we as backyard bird lovers with a heart for conservation should look out for these situations, be prepared, even put some systems in place to minimize the risk of infection. And again, if you think that this information was useful or might be useful to other bird lovers who are encountering this or may encounter it, feel free to pass it along. On. Let me know too in the comments if I missed anything or if you've had some really interesting observations. If we get some good comments to build up, what I may do is make a follow-up video. I really want to thank you all for taking the time to listen and watch and learn and take care of your birds. See you next time.